Hello, I'm Kelly Coatney, and John Hauk is my artist for presentation. His work has been described as that of a collage, but with photography as the glue, though he remains considered a photographer. Hauk went through an architecture undergrad program before he switched to software programming. When he got bored of that, Hauk decided to experiment with codes and colors during an independent study program in 2010. During that program, he created this book, The Digital Guide to Photography, in his first experimentation into using grids to create those combinations of colors. He describes this project as an exploration into the materiality of photography as it moves towards the digital age. He describes digital photography as a language where these tiny little grids and pixels of colors can form sentences, paragraphs, and then finally, as you zoom out and see the complete image, a complete story. He was so intrigued by this idea of setting up these colored grids to create a story that he went on to create a category of his work known as the aggregate. They were basically his book spreads turned into large prints. He would continue to experiment with these large scale works and would try to break up the regularity created by the coding by folding the papers and rephotographing them. And he would actually do this again and again until the final image shows the layered photograph that just shows the history and the process that he did to create it. He continued his aggregate experimentation further by cutting papers and incorporating the gaps and the shadows of those cuts into the works as well. He created diptychs and triptychs and played with the composition of the creases crossing like more than one poster and into the other posters in the set. At one point he wanted to create a single color version to complement the grid experiments with color and found that he couldn't just color pick the photos from Photoshop, that once they were all together, the eye perceives them as different. And so we actually needed to print out the gridded poster and take physical colors. And I think he mentioned color pencils is what he used to figure out what colors actually matched to the eye instead of just pixels on a computer. After all of these experiments, Hauk claims that the aggregates seemed to develop themselves and that he was no longer interested or as invested in their development. This coincided with his interest in psychoanalysis and his parents returning childhood relics to him. He began to develop these pieces incorporating childhood items and so he could explore the malleability of memory and illusions of the eye. This piece, Peg and John, is one of the first of those and using his method of photographing previous photographs, John would add in elements one at a time, overlapping them onto the previous photo until this was the end result. So layer after layer, he would take a certain amount of items, photograph them, print that out, lay the photograph down, add other items, photograph those, and just increase this process over and over and over again until this crazy collage image is made without any adding things in Photoshop. Another piece from the series of childhood items is called the first set. This photo is also of other photos, but this time there's a little special something and that something is paint. So even without the paint in the photo collage, you could tell that something is off with the perspective, mostly due to the mouths of the jars. They're set at different angles, despite the shadows being the same. But in order to accentuate that this is not a realistic three-dimensional representation of life, there's also these strokes of paint. So you have a flat stroke at the top representing tape. You have one at the bottom of the water jar that looks like a shadow. And those could really play into the idea of three-dimensional space. But the gestural stroke to the left of the paint jar really breaks that up and reminds you that this is not a three-dimensional image. This is a 2D flat picture. The coordinate system series is a blend of his interest in painting and using grids to display color patterns. After a trip to Italy and being inspired by the Renaissance, John hand casted his hand and positioned it for different compositions of these works. And he took the image of his hand, he hand painted the grids on these images, and he just kept with his method of layering and layering and layering until we get these compositions. So again, 
this is a combination of collage and painting and photography as the glue in order to make a three-dimensional image appear more two-dimensional or a reminder that this is not a three-dimensional image. An even further revolution of using paint in his work is the 2018 continuations of his series Playing and Reality, where the play is the paint and reality is the photography. This is the same series as the earlier work, The First Set, and the flat lays are also something that he's created alongside the other pieces I've shown, but there seems to have been an up uptake in them around 2018, especially regarding using paint in these flat lays. One of his most recent exhibitions is called The Holding Environment, and it continues John's desire to push at the boundaries separating painting and photography. Based on the idea of a safe, supportive space in relational psychoanalysis, these pieces have a personal significance that remains in its safe space or holding environment, and that significance isn't shared easily. These pieces and this concept also draw back to the series where he used the items as representations of childhood. So overall, John Houck's work deals with the main themes of breaking up the regularity and consistency of what we perceive, whether that be the colored grids being broken up by folds or cuts, or the painting to break the illusion of a three-dimensional space in a photograph. And he also deals with reflecting back on the relationship we have with people and the things that we encounter in childhood.